You're listening to the RN Mentor, a podcast designed to document and bring you the work and experience of some of the most influential nurses in our profession. We will be sitting down and having a discussion with the leaders of today's nursing world as they share their work, how they navigate their nursing path, and their views on the future of the profession. My name is Ali Tayeb. I am a registered nurse, United States Navy veteran, a Jonas Veterans Healthcare Scholar, and your host for the RN Mentor. Welcome to another episode of the RN Mentor Podcast. I am so excited to be joined uh, today by Dr. Shannon Zink. Uh, she is the director of the National Institute of Nursing Research. Dr. Zink earned her bachelor's in nursing from Illinois Wesleyan University, Bloomington, her master's degree in public health nursing and community health sciences from UIC, her doctorate in health behaviors and health education from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and her postdoctoral training in UIC Institute for Health Research and Policies, Cancer Education and Career Development Program. Prior to her current role, Dr. Zeng was a nursing collegiate professor in the Department of Population Health Nursing Science at the UIC College of Nursing and a fellow at the UIC Institute for Health Research and Policy. Dr. Zenk was elected as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing in 2013, received the President's Award from the Friends of the National Institute of Nursing Research in 2018, was inducted into the International Nurse Researchers Hall of Fame in 2019, and elected as a member of the National Academy of Medicine in 2021. Dr. Zenk's own research has focused on social inequities and health, with a goal of identifying effective multi-level approaches to improve health and eliminate racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic health disparities. Dr. Zeng's full bio can be found on the RN Mentor podcast website. And at this time, I'd like to welcome to the show, Dr. Zeng. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you for that nice introduction. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I know you're a busy person. And before we started recording, I mentioned to you, I had to jump through a lot of hoops to get you on the show, but but I'm glad we finally got to this point where we I have an opportunity to speak with you, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, I we'll, appreciate your patience with all that. <laughs> um, we'll start with, with like I said, uh, how I start all my podcasts is, how did you get started in the world of nursing? I think like um, a lot of um, people who go into nursing, I really wanted to help people, and one of my first jobs was in home health care as a case manager. Um, as you know, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time in people's homes, uh, helping with pain management, uh, talking about how to manage their chronic condition. Um, and, uh, you know, spending time in people's homes, I really struck me just the tremendous barriers to health equity. And, uh, you know, there was dramatic differences in people's environments, both in terms of privilege and poverty. And I really found it difficult um, at times to talk to people about healthy eating, for example, when what they really needed to improve their health or restore their health was far more fundamental, um, having decent housing, having enough food to eat, um, having a safe environment. So it was these kinds of observations um, as a nurse that really got me interested in how resources and risks were distributed across communities and how that affected people's health and ultimately contributed to health disparities. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Now, before you got into, and I'm I'm, I'm just going to, I'm assuming you're, you're a case manager as an RN, Yes. Um, And how did you decide you're going to even, uh, I'm going to track a little bit back. How did you even decide you were going to, uh, you know, the point came that you were going to go into a nursing program? Like, what was the decision point for you where like, this is the career for me, or this is the profession I'd like to step into? Yeah. Um, I think it was a long path. I didn't start out um, as a nursing major. I, I went to school thinking I would 
uh, study French and German. I've always had a lot of interest in um, international issues and uh, international relations. So that was my original goal. Um, but I think my mom knew me best. Uh, she always planted the seed that she thought I would be um, a nurse. And ultimately, she, you know, I proved her right. And uh, it's not where I thought I would go, but I've never looked back. And, and she was right. It, it was an amazing career choice for me. Uh, so were there mentors uh, other than your mom obviously nudged you? I, I, I think moms have a way of doing that. I was in the... <laughs> in the Navy for like 10 years. And my mom was always nudging me to go back to school, go back to school, go back to school. And finally it happened. Um, but was there, was there role models that you, uh, that she, was there nurses in your family or other people that had gone that route and that was what she was thinking or for you to, for, for anyone to role model, model that piece for you? Actually, no. Uh, we didn't really, I mean, I think one of my cousins is a nurse um, who, you know, is similar in age. We didn't have um, nursing uh, nurses in our family, uh, but I was interested in science. And, uh, you know, and again, I really have always, you know, cared deeply about others, really wanted to always find a way to help. And so, um, for her, that just um, made sense uh, to her. And again, she, you know, was right. Uh, and then it was a big commitment because to become a nurse, um, I went to a liberal arts university, as you said, and the only path at that time was really to spend four full years. So I um, started over uh, in my second year of undergraduate and, you know, had a five-year program, basically, when I switched to nursing. So it was a you know, a pretty big commitment to change my major at that time. But um, yeah, I had a great experience in undergraduate. I learned so much and it was a really nice blend between science and really science for a purpose uh, in terms of uh, applying that to help people and improve their lives and ultimately their health. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's. Um, I mean, the fact that you had, you had that um, sort of drive and that caring personality um, I think that's, 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 you know, this kind of foundation to our profession. Uh, so it's, it's nice to find that avenue. Um, and, uh, I'm going to thank your mom, uh, for pushing you in this direction because you're definitely, uh, have, uh, have definitely embraced the profession and you are where you are now. Um, now with your first, uh, first, uh, uh experience out of, uh, nursing school, uh, where did you start? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I started in the hospital, like uh, many other new nurses, I started on a medical surgical unit, which is just, um, you know, as you know, a very common <laughs> uh, place to start. And um, I mean, I, I learned a lot that that was an amazing um, time in the hospital. Uh, I had opportunities that I never would have guest in terms of leadership opportunities to serve on uh, the council for uh, nursing in, in that hospital. And so it was, it was great. Um, but I, I mean, I always honestly, um, in nursing school thought I would uh, go into critical care. And I thought, in terms of an advanced degree, I, I thought I would um, pursue a degree in uh, nurse administered anesthesia. Uh, that was originally my interest. Um, but when I was in the hospital, um, I just found um, I wanted more independence. And uh, that really led me um, to uh, go into the community and go into home health care. And so uh, that really started my love uh, for community and really thinking about how to bridge uh, clinical care with community care and um, the many ways uh, and opportunities that nurses have to um, improve people's lives and their health. Um, certainly uh, in acute care settings, um, you know, a lot of nurses work. And I think increasingly, as we know, it's in the community as well in such a wide variety of settings. And so, um, yeah, that's how I got my start. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing that you say that because uh, the more uh, the more people I talk to through, whether it's like colleagues that I am connected with or, uh, or people uh, that I've had on the podcast of how the 
the the drive of them going from seeing an issue that they are exposed to within the world of nursing and taking that and taking it that step further so they are impacting change. Uh, and I think that's key. And it's great that you were, you know, you were able to do that. And that's one of the things I love about the world of nursing. We're able to just pivot, right? And that's, it's not a huge pivot, but it's just a pivot and our impact becomes completely different, right? Uh, like from bedside, we definitely have impact, but just a little turn like few degrees and we look at another directions and step at different directions and our impact is different community or it gets wider and uh, we're able to do that and that's one of the things I appreciate about the profession right there's so many things we can do and our impact is, uh, is great so uh, that's fantastic now how did you yeah. decide so you were you, you mentioned after case management you were looking at making changes right uh, how did you decide you're going what was your what was the path that you took in order to get uh, make a community impact based on what you were seeing in case management? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, as I talked about, it was really observations in people's homes and in different communities that, um, you know, sparked questions in my mind uh, around uh, the implications for health. So, um, but I, I needed to learn more. I wanted to learn more. Uh, you know, I knew there was uh, likely a science behind it and uh, a background I needed to really address the questions that I had. And so I went back to school pretty quickly. And uh, I, you know, I went to Chicago. I, I was in um, Minneapolis. I moved to Chicago and uh, started school and it was a, you know, a nice opportunity to pursue a, dual degree in nursing and public health and really get that broader perspective in terms of uh, the intersection between uh, clinical care and uh, community care. Wow. Um, and how did that, what doors did that open up for you? Um, going into that, you know, getting that degree uh, and how did, you, how, how, how did the degree or the knowledge you obtained through that program help you with what you what your goal was yeah i i did have um some really key mentors in my master's program um i uh was working at the time i don't i had no experience in research but i had a passion for it and um one of my mentors at the time was the it wound up being the dean of the uh, College of Nursing at UIC, Joan Shaver. And for some reason, she saw something in me and uh, gave me my first uh, paid job in research. And I learned a lot from her. She spent a lot of time with me and uh, talking to me about my research. And ultimately, um, our areas of research, um, as I went forward, weren't um, super closely aligned, but she was a tremendous mentor. I think um, I, I had a lot of really key mentors. Um, I was reminded recently um, of another mentor I had there. Uh, so it was Dr. Nana Paragallo. Uh, she was on faculty at uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago at the time. And, uh, you know, she did really amazing work uh, with uh, um, Hispanic populations and health disparities. And um, that really resonated with me. And she opened the door for me as part of my master's project uh, to do a study on health practices among Mexican women in Chicago. And um, I, I think I can trace back uh, really concretely uh, my path and health disparities to the experiences and the conversations I had with her. So I really feel very fortunate at um, the mentorship I've received and um, yeah, just I'm very lucky at those um, experiences that really changed my life. That's amazing that you had the opportunity to have those mentors in place uh, and, uh, and be able to do that. Um, again, one, one of the reasons I do this show is to uh, provide or not only provide uh, the opportunity for people to hear from people like yourself, uh, who are uh, who are mentors, right, and leaders in the community, uh, but also uh, 
emphasize the importance of mentorship uh, in, in whether you are experienced or a novice, I think mentorship, uh, I have mentors and I have mentees, right? So I think it's important that, uh, that, we, that we, we do our due diligence to not only seek out mentors, but also to make sure that we're providing opportunities for the people that are coming up in the profession. And thank you uh, for sharing that story. I think it's important. Um, now, how did this, uh, the, these experiences, because I know I've looked at your CV uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's a very impressive CV. Uh, actually, I use it in some of my classes to say, here's a CV and <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> uh, so uh, with that said, um, how did you, how did that foundation that you built stepping into research really get you started into all the work that you've done because you've done a significant amount of work uh, throughout the years uh, uh, with, 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 your, with, with various topics. But I saw a lot of, with, uh, with the population health and uh, nutrition, there's a lot of stuff like that. How did you get started? And how did you find, I guess my biggest thing for me, even for myself uh, is for, for those who are looking to do, to do research, um, and really build a portfolio around research. What steps did you take in order to build your portfolio, uh, a successful per portfolio? Mm -hmm. Well, those experiences in my master's program um, just um, excited, me, got me excited about research and I fell in love and I uh, just continued on into school at University of Michigan. And uh, I, again, there, I, um, I had wonderful mentorship. I had amazing opportunities. I, uh, when I went to Michigan, I had very different ideas of what kinds of things I thought I'd study, but um, at Michigan, I really became more and more interested in community, and that was in part through coursework. Uh, I took a class in community organizing, and as part of that, I spent time in Detroit, and um, the project I was assigned to work on um, was really mobilizing around a, a grocery store that was uh, run down, selling poor quality foods, and um, so it was partly that experience uh, through my classes combined with uh, working as a research assistant in Detroit and um, talking to uh, people there about lack of access to healthy foods nearby. And um, so it was really listening to people and um, being engaged in the community that led me to my initial research questions around the distribution of foods uh, across communities. And um, that led to my first study and probably my most seminal work uh, looking at food deserts. So I started in Detroit uh, looking at um, differences in access to supermarkets across communities, uh, expanded that uh, to Chicago and finally nationwide. And that um, early work, which was in the early 2000s, that was really some of the earliest studies in the United States on food deserts. And I'm really proud of that work. And, um, uh, you know, I think it has led to uh, changes in policy uh, at the local level, as well as the national level. And uh, as you we were talking about earlier, I think just little shifts um, can help us kind of continue to increase our impact. Um, certainly always, uh, caring for and uh, working with individuals is a key part of nursing. But again, part of the really um, unique parts of the profession to me is that our scope really ranges from individuals to entire populations, from clinical settings throughout the community. And it's, you know, it provides a lot of opportunities for nursing and really gives us tremendous opportunities to make an impact. That's amazing. Uh, and thank you for the work. I still, I have a, uh, uh, I teach an ambulatory care course. And one of the things that I have my students do is look at individual impact and looking at specific communities, geographical locations. And the word uh, food desert still comes up a lot. Uh, and we're, as a, I think as a nation, we're really slow <laughs> in making the changes that we need to make. Uh, in order to close those gaps. Um, for, um, and one of the things that Simon says is, what, what can you do as an individual? 
uh, in the community, what can you do at a state level, what can you do at a national level, so they get a broader perspective. Um, but uh, for somebody, and, and this, is, this is a topic I'm passionate about also, and I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit here, um, but if, uh, if um, uh, from, a, from a new nurse perspective, right? Uh, if I wanted to do, and let's say I have, a nine, I have a 12 hour shift job at a hospital, but I wanna make an impact on the community uh, that I may be living in. Uh, what are some good ways for nurses to do that uh, on a community level? Because a lot of our work, you know, some people are like, I'm not going to do anything at a state. I'm not a politician. I'm not going to go to, you know, my state capital and try to do something there. But what can nurses do uh, in their own communities uh, that is, you know, that is an achievable goal for them? What can they do? Well, I think um, as with anything, we can't do it alone and we shouldn't do it alone. Um, so I have this uh, close colleague and um, it's always stuck with me, um, her kind of coining a perspective of caring and context. So really, um, we, you know, wherever we work, uh, in a clinic, in a hospital, in a school, in a workplace, to really understand the surrounding community, which we may or may not live in. So really spending time in those communities to understand um, where clients are coming from, uh, what the issues are, what the barriers are uh, for them to be healthy. I think that's um, uh a really critical thing that uh, we should be doing in nursing is really understanding the context uh, where our patients or um, families or uh, communities, uh, you know, what their life is like. And um, so then in terms of really thinking about how to have an impact outside perhaps of um, your immediate job, I think is partnering with community organizations that are there. Um, they know what they need, uh, they know what the solutions are. And so, um, you know, I'd encourage all of us to think about ways to partner uh, with um, organizations and groups that are in the communities where we work or where we live. and. Um, I think that's how to go about it. It's hard to do it and we shouldn't do it uh, on our own. Right, I agree. Um, I, feel, I feel like you just justified one of my assignments in, my, in one of my courses. So, because <laughs> that's exactly, well, I mean, that's exactly, that, that's, that's sort of the point I try to drive home with them is for them to reach out to those community agencies and get involved with those community agencies. I mean, as an individual, I can do some stuff, but it's more impactful when I join the organization, not, it's not even a joining organization, but lending or volunteering with some of the organizations that are already doing some of that work. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, I know you, uh, um, uh, you've, you've went into a, your doctoral studies, right? After your master's program, you went into your doctoral studies and have uh, had a academic career and now you're you're here how did you decide you were going to go into your uh doc doctoral studies uh and the path that took you into academia and so on yeah it was it was that um passion for research that ultimately led me uh to a phd program and and the time and the experiences i had in detroit but um i'm a nurse and uh, i always was interested in returning um so to speak to nursing and um combining the insights and the knowledge I had gained um, from a, a wide variety of disciplines to inform uh, nursing practice, uh, nursing education and uh, policy. So I went, um, came back to Chicago and uh, did a postdoc uh, in cancer prevention um, and then uh, joined the faculty at uh, UIC in the College of Nursing where I'd gotten my um, master's degree. So, and I, was at uh, UIC in a faculty role uh, for, actually now I don't remember, maybe 14 <laughs> years, uh, that's my best guess. Um, yeah, so I, I did that for a long time, loved it, loved doing research, loved mentoring uh, nursing students and students from other disciplines. And, um, you know, I enjoyed teaching and I had the chance to teach research. So I really was lucky and being able to, Kind of marry all of my different interests in one job. That's great. Uh, now, uh, I know that the director position for NINR didn't happen by mistake or, or all of a sudden. How did that position um, 
grab your interest and how were you prepared? Like I, people always, you know, sometimes ask me, how did you know you were going to be in that role? Uh, how do you think, uh, what led to you saying, you know what, I'm going to step or I'm going to apply for this role. I'm going to step into this role uh, and I feel prepared for it. How did you, how did, what was the conversation you had in your own head that made you decide that? Yeah, I, I loved what I was doing. I loved, uh, you know, it was a privilege really to be able to do research on the questions that I was interested in, the populations I cared about, and I loved working with students. And um, I learned about uh, the NINR director position when I was, you know, um, doing my work. And um, though I was happy with uh, where I was and what I was doing, I also was really intrigued uh, at the idea of leading on a, on a larger scale. And uh, as I thought about it, I really thought it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to apply my experiences both as a nurse and as a researcher and to have a, a greater impact on practice and policy. Um, so, I love uh, Hamilton, the play. I love the soundtrack and um, I love the lyric. Um, I'm not throwing away my shot. And uh, to me, that uh, lyric just uh, kept coming to my mind. I felt like my shot was to advance nursing science on health equity from a more strategic position. And you know, somehow I got hired and I'm really honored to be part of an organization, um, you know, with the goal of improving the lives of millions. And it's a tremendous uh, privilege. That's awesome. Um, uh, so you went, you went through the process, you got hired as the director of NINR. Um, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about NINR and, um, and, and afterwards, if you could share with us what your goals are and perhaps how your NINR is different than the one from your predecessor's NINR. So let me start with our mission, uh, which um, is leading nursing science uh, to solve pressing health challenges and inform practice and policy. Uh, optimizing health and advancing health equity into the future. So that's what guides us. Uh, we believe that nursing research is well poised to solve our nation's most pressing health challenges because of the perspective that nursing and nursing science brings, which we've been talking about today. Um, what sets NINR and nursing research apart from the work I think of all the other institutes at NIH is that we're focused on people in the context of their lives and their living conditions and what they need to be healthy. What are the solutions that are needed? Um, and I think that's really because um, nurses, we know people and we practice in so many different settings that have the potential to address many of the social determinants of health. And as part of that, we're focused on expanding our reach uh, of our science to really impact practice and policy and to benefit then entire populations and communities. Um, and this is really a vision and a direction that's near and dear to my heart and rooted in my practice as a nurse. That's awesome. Um, so um, for anybody, uh, any of the researchers out there, nurse researchers out there, uh, if you're if they are looking at NINR, um, again, how is it different today than maybe uh, a few years ago? Uh, how is your, what was your what is your strategy in uh, taking NINR into the future? What is what is what does that look like for you? Uh, from a if you are if a nurse if you are sitting down with a nurse uh, researcher, which I happen to be one, <laughs> and they said. Uh, what's in it for me? How does NINR impact me, right? Uh, so what, what, would, what would you say to them? Well, um, I think uh, we have this tremendous privilege and responsibility to think strategically about 
how nursing science can improve the health of the nation. And we take that responsibility very seriously. So when I came on board, uh, it happened to be a time of strategic planning and we looked at the health and healthcare landscape. And of course, um, when I came on board, we were in the middle of the pandemic and all of the um, challenges the inequities uh, that were highlighted uh, through the pandemic. So um, our approach was to reach out and listen to as many people as possible about their ideas for the future of nursing science, to examine the health and the healthcare landscape, um, and to think about how to draw on the strengths of nursing and um, apply that to solving uh, our nation's pressing health challenges. So um, where we've landed is, um, you know, we're, we're focused on shaping priorities through five research lenses that we think best leverage the strengths of nursing science and that will position the field to innovate, think even bigger than we have in the past and um, ultimately provide more opportunities for our science. So in short, uh, we're looking to fund research that promotes health equity as one of the lenses, addresses social determinants of health, uh, can impact population and community health, promotes disease prevention and prom you know, better health for everyone. And lastly, uh, that can improve and uh, or develop better systems and models of care. And of course, um, you know, we're doing this again in the midst of a pandemic, uh, and thus we think no vision for the future can ignore the challenges and what we've learned during COVID. Um, the pandemic, as I mentioned, really brought into uh, sharp relief the persistent health inequities in our communities. And I think if the pandemic has shown us one thing, it's that we're all in this together. And if one community fails, we all fail. So we're committed to ultimately supporting the strongest, highest impact science. And uh, we feel a responsibility to prioritize research that really has the greatest potential to solve um, our nation's health challenges. Great. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's great that, there's, uh, that you have these buckets that you feel uh, are important uh, for nursing research. Uh, where is, um, as you're mentioning this, because I know, uh, you know, when I go to conferences, uh, a lot of uh, like the research that we see, they're very themed. Uh, uh, it seems like where is nursing, where can nursing um, do a better job in getting involved in research, right? Like, like, where are we falling short? Or where can we improve uh, from, a, from like, from a, from a, you know, we have, X amount of uh, nurse researchers out there. Uh, where are some areas where we can get more involved with? Uh, to me, it comes down to just really thinking about the strengths of our profession and our discipline. And to me, that's about our holistic and contextualized perspective that we bring that's quite unique uh, among health uh, professionals and disciplines. And I think drawing on that perspective to really um, advanced science based on our understanding of people, their lives, their living conditions, and to understand determinants of health and to identify effective solutions at multiple levels uh, for individuals, families, and communities, um, and at multiple levels, uh, individual level, interpersonal factors, uh, community factors, and societal factors. So I think that's our biggest strength and contribution uh, to a biomedical enterprise like NIH. Uh, they, many people don't have that broad perspective that nursing brings. And I think that's a tremendous asset that we should leverage. That's fantastic. Um, being where you are, and if you had your uh, wish list uh, and you could grow nursing science, uh, where would your impact do you think uh, from an NINR perspective or from your perspective, uh, where, what can we do to get more, to grow nursing science, right? Bring more nurse scientists and get more interest in nursing science. Mm, yeah, Cause you know, nursing research from an undergrad perspective, you know, if, you're in a, if you're teaching research in undergrad, it's this, 
horrible thing that they have to take and you try to make it as fun as possible and you try to get them engaged as possible and a few of them walk away and are like oh i never thought about research this way but this is something i'll look into but the majority of nurses out there uh it, like especially now <laughs> i'm gonna say they were like they don't think about this until later on in their careers where a lot of other professions like it's like a straight shot to research uh how do we get more nurses involved Ear i guess earlier would be my thing earlier in their careers, get them involved in research. So they have more decades under their belt in the research field. Mm -hmm. mm, that's such a great question. And <laughs> it's something that I know we're grappling with as a field uh, yeah. because we're all concerned about um, whether we have a sufficient uh, and well-prepared and diverse uh, nursing science workforce. That's sure. certainly something that um, we're concerned about at NINR. Um, I think, uh, you know, part of your question is maybe part of the answer in that that first nursing research course that people take is really important. Um, how do we introduce people who may not uh, be think they're interested in research or have never considered it uh, to ignite their passion, ignite um, their interest in research. So I think that really thinking through that first course, uh, I think is important and trying to connect it to questions that they have. Uh, what, what are things that they see around them? What are their own experiences? And trying to connect that to, um, you know, a research being a key to answer those questions that we already have. And I think uh, to me, you know, there are tremendous um, challenges and disparities in our nation. And when we clearly do not have uh, the evidence we need to solve those tremendous um, challenges. And so really connecting research to making a difference um, uh, to solve problems, to improve people's lives and their health, um, to that sort of more noble uh, mission of what research is really all about um, uh, makes sense to me. That's great. Um, and I'm gonna put, put this out there uh, from, from those who are going, a lot of research happens in academia, uh, um, especially from in the nursing, in the nursing world. Um, how do we, uh, and, nurses going from service lines to academia are often faced with this uh, pay gap, right? Uh, where there, it's not equitable for, I mean, even for myself, I took uh, all, like a 45% pay cut going from service to academia. Um, and uh, how, do we, how do we make this uh, world of research more enticing? without uh, saying, take a vow of poverty. Cause that's, that's one of the things, you know, it's really time and money uh, when yeah. people go into like higher degrees and higher education. Um, and uh, how do we, and that's, that's one of the barriers that we have uh, get people interested in doctoral programs and getting them interested in going into a field that is research. Uh, but how do we, uh, and, and I guess this is more of an opinion piece. I don't know if there's an answer to this. Um, where do you think the future of nursing research lives if we continue to have this um, pay difference between what people can make in service versus academia? Yeah, I mean, we hear about this um, often. Uh, it worries us, it's, it's a concern for us as well, uh, how to make this a feasible option for those who are interested. Um, you know, I, I think um, from being in this position and, um, you know, having a growing understanding of the landscape, we're certainly all ears in terms of what we can do at NINR to make this a more feasible option. Um, there are certainly um, some constraints in terms of um, what's possible at the federal level. Um, but we are listening, uh, we are uh, sharing our concerns in a variety of ways across NIH and the federal government. Um, so, um, you know, we'll continue with that. I think um, it, there is no easy answer, um, but we recognize that the concerns are 
are, are certainly, of course, real. Uh, the constraints are real. And um, again, we're, we're happy to hear ideas about how we can be more effective and more helpful in that space. That's fantastic. Thank you. And your voice is important, is an important one. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that I, uh, I appreciate hearing it from you that it is also a concern. Uh, and, and you are voicing that. So that's always appreciated. Um, I guess one really uh, sort of last question uh, from, <laughs> from me um, is how, how do you see um, um, nursing in the, when we look at nurse, nurse, the nursing future and sort of the landscape of where we are right now in the pandemic, uh, how do, where do you see uh, nursing, the nursing's future and how do you see NINR um, uh, impacting uh, the work of nursing now? There's lots of ways to answer that. I think, um... I mean, research is essential to nursing practice and all the settings that nurses are in, community and clinical and, um, you know, research and practice are closely tied. And so, um, you know, my hope is that uh, we can continue to um, grow our scientific workforce to address the questions that we need to improve uh, nursing practice and policy and ultimately people's health. So um, I guess that's how I would answer that. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Um, I guess, okay, this is really going to be my second to last question for you. Um, how should nursing, because not, not, not everybody's a nurse scientist or a researcher, how, do, how, do, how would you like nursing as a profession to engage more with an INR? Mm. Or an INR engage with the profession of nursing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to keep talking yeah. and I think we need to strategically figure out how we can leverage the strengths um, of the whole spectrum to improve people's health, to, you know, um, protect and support nurses in the field um, and um, ultimately improve the public's health. We're, we're all approaching the same goals in terms of um, helping people, uh, helping people to uh, be more healthy and live, um, you know, better quality lives. And uh, we need to be working more together and not so siloed between practice and policy. So continuing to find ways to dialogue, um, opportunities to collaborate and, um, you know, and ultimately, I think that'll lead all of us to being more effective. So that's my hope. And I know at NINR, we're talking about that a lot in terms of how to continue to expand our, our, our outreach uh, and uh, have those dialogues. That's fantastic. And I, and I appreciate you bringing up, uh, you brought it up several times, um, but how um, uh, the research is connected to policy and, edu and education and how they're all interconnected because research by itself, it doesn't go anywhere it has zero impact. It's the policy changes and making sure that it, we are sharing their information so other people can make changes in practice. That is, uh, that is where we need to push everything uh, once we are done with those research. Uh, it's, so it's not just publication and doing the research, but actually how do we get the information out, educate people, and how do we impact policies uh, so we can make, actually make those changes uh, more concrete. So thank you very much. I'm going to, my only last thing is, do you have, uh, I'll give the floor to you if you have anything else to share uh, with, uh, with, uh, with our listeners. Thanks for asking that. I mean, this was just a wonderful conversation. Again, thank you for the invitation and I enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm really excited uh, to share that our focus on health equity and our commitment to solving um, our nation's pressing health challenges is um, leading to even more opportunities for nursing and nursing science. Um, so at NIH, um, how this looks is really more opportunities to collaborate with other institutes and centers um, that provides more opportunities for nurses and nursing science scientists um, were able to lead uh, working groups and initiatives across NIH related to social determinants, health equity and health disparities, climate change and health, um, the social, behavioral and economic impacts of COVID and ending addiction. So I think that all uh, bodes well for the perspective we bring and how it's valued and appreciated at NIH. 
So um, I think there's just a lot of amazing opportunities to come for nursing science and looking forward to working um, really broadly with the community to advance uh, nursing and nursing science. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for your time. I know you are super busy uh, with everything that you're doing. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, we have been listening to Dr. Shannon Zenk, and she is the director of the National Institute of Nursing Research. And with that, have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll talk soon. You've been listening to the RN Mentor with your host, Ali Taya. Please don't forget to visit www.aliartayeb.com. That's www.aliartayeb.com for podcast notes and resources. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I wish you fair winds and following seas.